What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at the ever so popular S&P 500 ETF SPY, ticker symbol SPY, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Friday, May 24th. Alright guys, SPY here today down $3.87 per share, that's minus 0.73% in regular trading hours, about flat here so far in the after hours, either way, take that with a grain of salt, it's bound to be low volume in the after hours. Let's take a look at SPY and get the absolute best feeling that we can for this ETF, therefore kind of the broader market, as we head into tomorrow. We're going to pull out as much bias, directional bias as we can out of the volume profile, we'll look at psychological levels, implied volatility, the expected move for tomorrow, and the directional bias coming out of the chain for tomorrow. First up, macro things going on here tomorrow. All right, so the schedule is at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we get U.S. Durable Goods. That's a data release. The forecast is negative 0.8%. At 9.20 a.m. Eastern Time, we, uh, the Fed's Waller is expected to start speaking. And then at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, we get the uh, University of Michigan sentiment final read. The forecast for that is 67.7. The University of Michigan number is, it comes out twice a month, and what we get is the preliminary number, and then two weeks later, we get the final number, which is what we get tomorrow. You know, full disclosure, the preliminary read tends to, to move the market more, because the final is basically just an adjusted version of the preliminary read. Okay, so the final is the less volatile, typically, of the two, and that's the one we get tomorrow. Again, the forecast is 67.7. Now, let's get started here with that volume profile analysis here on the five-minute chart. Listen, guys, by the way, if you're new here or if you have not done so already, I cover SPY every single trading day. It's a daily upload, so listen, I appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Helps out tremendously, and my goal here is uh, 10,000, so I appreciate it, and I'll keep the SPY videos coming. Now, let's take a look under the hood and see if there's anything that we can pull out. Immediately off the open, we get that high volume opening bar, quick fade off in volume. First thing I want to point out, we started to see an increase in volume to the red side as that sell-off kind of increased in the aggressive nature of it, I'll say. And then as soon as the, the ETF began to bounce, volume then tank, tanked off back to what is more contextual for that time of day, a fade off. Listen, this isn't tremendous bias, but it is there, I would say probably about 10% bearish bias there, not far off the open, not a lot at all on a scale of one, or 0 to 100. All right, as we move through the day, this all kind of cancels each other out. Moving through, we start to see an increase in red volume, and then we get that pop on the green bar. This isn't enough because it's by itself. There's too much of a risk there. But as we move through the end of the day, I'm not going to sign any here either because it's pretty contextual with kind of like the last third of the trading day. And then as we head into the close, it's very normal to see kind of a jump in volume. This big doji, which is why it's white, it opened at the same point uh, that it closed at, the, the, the bar did. So that's a rebalancing bar. Okay, that's why the volume is so high. And, um, you know, we're seeing another rebalancing bar immediately after the close, which is also going to see a little bit of pumped up volume, at least due to what you might see on a norm or what you might expect for after hours because there's still rebalancing going on by algorithms at that time. So really all we get here, guys, is a very small amount, very small, like 10% bearish bias, not long after the open. And honestly, I would, I would have expected to see a little bit more and being a, a three quarter percent red day, um, you know, a 1% move plus or minus on SPY is a big, that's a pretty volatile day, right? It doesn't do that every day. So I would have expected to see a little bit more bearish bias so bears, you know, you still won the day, but as far as the volume profile, that's a little bit disappointing. Bulls, you know, the bears still won the day. It's down. But as far as the volume profile, not the worst thing you could have seen. All right, could have been worse. Now let's move on to something arguably much more simple, and that's the psychological self-fulfilling prophecy levels, starting with the 30-minute. All right, these are levels that a lot of trade decisions are going to be made around. And we see here that, uh, you know, Last night, in last night's video, we saw SPY get pumped due to NVIDIA earnings after hours. And listen, we talked about this, but we still closed beneath the 200 period and the 50 period. Right? I, I issued kind of a fair warning that, hey, we, we're going to need to see this retest intraday. So once the volume came back in and we retested it intraday, we gave it up. All right, so now we find ourselves a, a bit of ways from that, uh, the nearest, which is the 200 period, about plus or 0.86%. It 
to that level. Um, what I expect to occur tomorrow is I expect that 50 period to come downside and kind of close that distance, uh, requiring less of a move to make a test of the first level here on the 30 minute, which would likely end up being that 50 period because it's going to move quicker than the 200 or react to the to this move in the ETF more so. So here's what I'm really looking for. Bulls, the goal tomorrow here on the 30 minute is to reclaim likely what ends up being that 50 period because it's likely to come lower, right? Reclaim that as support. All right, whereas bears, as this 50 period comes down, if spy bounces, you're going to want to see that reject on, on ideally as much volume as possible on the rejection. And then you're kind of starting to get in that, that position that you bears would like with a descending ETF with a descending 50 period and a descending 200 period. That's the goal if you're a bear. Now let's take a look and move on to the four hour. Guys, today on the four hour, we gave up the 50 period moving average. You know, certainly not ideal. It's been a little while since, you know, even on this chart, this chart goes back, oh, probably two weeks is what I have it set to. And you can see that today in that time frame was the first time we really made a true test of the 50 period and we gave it up here on SPY. So understand that people are watching this. This is a heavily watched indicator on a heavily watched time frame. And all I care about, I don't care about the indicator for the sake of it being an indicator. The only reason we're looking at that is because other people are as well. Therefore, institutions are as well, because they know that others are watching it. The, listen, the psychology of these popular indicators, it really does come full circle. So here's what I'm looking at tomorrow. Now you can see that we are, as of right now in the after hours, we're about a half of a percent away from making a retest of that 50. Bears, if SPY bounces and tests the 50, very similar to the 30 minute, you want to see that reject hard, whereas bulls, a win on the on the four hour chart here today or tomorrow, a, a win looks like this: high volume break upside through, retest, bounce, reclaim it as support, and kind of wash away this break today and say, hey, you know, in a way like we didn't mean it, it's, we weren't quite ready to break that. We're gonna go ahead and reclaim that as support. But now the daily, arguably the most important chart of all. We've been talking a lot about five thirty to five thirty two. That area has been a struggle. Bears, yesterday we talked about kind of getting down toward 525, if not through 525. Well, you guys almost pulled that off here today, putting some distance between the ETF now and 530. That was a channel we were kind of stuck inside of for about a week. So looking ahead now to tomorrow, Bears, here's what I'm watching if I'm positioned short, the market. Ideally, SPY getting down but beneath 525, capturing 525 as kind of a new resistance level. Beginning that stair-stepping mentality down, down and down and down further with each $5 increment, reclaiming it, you know, as often as possible day to day as a new resistance. That's that stair-stepping downside mentality. Bulls, to avoid that completely, let's hold 525 and ideally head back up toward 530 just to put ourselves back in that ball game of 530 so we can look to, in the near future, right, break back up above 530, um, you know back up to levels that we were previously struggling with. Or I suppose up to levels for the first time that we were pre previously last week or so struggling to get up to. Now implied volatility, it did spike a little bit today. So in the last week now, we are a little bit high. Okay, compared to the last week, compared to the last month, I would say it's in the mid to low range. And compared to the last three months, it's certainly in the lower range. All right, very important where, to understand where IV lies, uh, but you always want to compare that to your intended trade time frame. Um, the context with IV is so important when you're trading options, right? Because Vega, the Greek Vega, literally prices that into your contracts. So you want to make sure that that's, that's making sense in your position where IV is based on the position that you're taking. Now, expected move for tomorrow. Of course, tomorrow's expiration. We have daily expirations on SPY. We have on May 24th, which is, of course, tomorrow's close, Friday's close. The expected move by then compared to today's close is plus or minus $3.13 per share. So that is quite literally the one standard deviation expected volatility by tomorrow's close that the market is pricing in. So that's the baseline. You can then look at that and say, okay, I, I disagree with that or I agree with that and utilize that potentially to your advantage. If you disagree with it, that's more ideal, obviously, because that, that along with a strong directional bias, can be a potential position for you. All right, you you kind of want to disagree with the 
expected move if you're looking to take a position because that opens up a window for you to position yourself. And finally, the directional bias. If we look at the volume, big volume out, out of the spy chain here today, 9.3 million of those, 4.41 million were calls and 4.91 million were puts. So it's not, it's not heavy leaning one way or the other, but a bit of a bearish bias on the overall ratio. And if we go by time frame, the 0 to 20 delta range, those are going to be the short-term speculators. 1.76 million calls, 2.01 million puts. Again, relatively evenly matched compared to what we've seen in the past, but still a bit of a bearish bias, put side bias uh, out of the short-term speculators today as well. Listen, guys, if you're getting value out of the daily spy videos, I appreciate if you just leave a like on the video. It's the best thing you can do to help grow the channel, and it helps out tremendously. Seriously, you have no idea. I appreciate that, and I'll see you in the next one.